What's up, everybody? Alex here from Alto Music, bringing you guys another phenomenal guest here at NAMM 2017. We are at the Kirk Mangan Guitar String Booth, and I got Stephen Brewer of Westfield Massacre. Thank you so much for being here. It's great to have you here. Your record came out in 2016. It sounds phenomenal. One of my personal favorites of 2016. And rightfully so, you guys have just had a very successful Kickstarter campaign to, in support of the second record. How has recording the second record been so far? It's been really good, man. We're uh, we're really busy. We're probably about halfway done with it right now, and it should come out sometime this spring. Yeah, that's great. And you guys had a great start. I know you just went out with uh, Trivium and Seven Dust and Like a Storm. You were on uh, Not Fest uh, on the opening stage, which I thought was great. You, uh, um, I know you guys are going out with my friends in Candiria soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Shout out to John from Candiria, and um, and just a lot of great things happening. So, uh, how's the first record cycle been so far? The first record is really cool. Uh, it's really important to when you first come out to have a, as much of a buzz and impact as possible. And we were really grateful that you know we came out. We had a lot of people who were really rooting for us. It really helped us get like a lot of cool stuff. You know, Clint and the guys from um, Seven Dust invited us to come out. So that really, really broke the band. Is going out there and doing a Seven Dust tour and a tri you know with Trivium and whatnot. And then we got asked to do Not Fest from the Musicians Institute because I'm an alumni from there. So they rooted for us to come out there and play Not Fest, Oz Fest, and that was amazing. And, uh, you know, it's been great, man. We're very thankful, you know. We're five guys who are happy to make music, you know, and that, that we're going to continue to do it. So it's amazing. Five talented guys who are happy to make music. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. because um, I've noticed I consider Westfield Massacre almost to be like a super group because, you know, Tommy being from Divine Heresy and Snot and Vexed, um, you know, Ira being an Attica 7, Eric played with Otep, I believe, yep. right? Yep. And um, I know that originally Tim Young was on drums for right. Morbid Angel and Nile. I think uh, one of the members of Trans Siberian Orchestra. Bill Hudson, yeah. Yeah, Bill yeah. Hudson uh -huh. was on it. So you guys have had a phenomenal, like, uh, you got took so many different elements of metal and put it into one project and just a pure essence of brutality and great yeah. metal. So with all these side projects that came into it, do you, would you say that that allowed you to bring different uh, elements of different types of metal into it? Like Absolutely. I, I think Westfield Massacre has a, a very eclectic sound. You know, the band existed before myself, Ira, Eric Dio joined the band. So there was definitely big shoes to fill, but I, I think that we definitely filled those and like carried the band forward and that, you know, we are the band. You know what I mean? Like, like we completed the next record. We're writing a phenomenal record right now, but I, I definitely think that we have a very eclectic sound. You know, I tell my friends, like, check us out. Some songs are blast beating like crazy. Some songs are four on the floor, kind of like a hey type feel, you know. It, it, which is really cool, you know, like ACDC has their niche where they can sound like the same every single record. Cannibal Corpse or Morbid Angel or like this extreme tech, like, like you know, Mayhem or like Marduk or Emperor's black metal bands, they can do their thing. But sincerely, I think that, you know, we're really blessed that we kind of, our sound is everything, you know, like Honorable Discharge is kind of like a hard rock song, you know, and then, and like, then you have like Consummation of Disgrace, which is just like sure, blasting, you know, kill your family type shit, you know what I mean? That type of stuff. So yeah, we have a really eclectic sound and it's really cool, you know? Yeah, and that kind of goes into my next question, because I know that one of your songs you co uh, collaborated with Randy from Lamb of God, yeah. which, Underneath the Skin, it's a brutal song. Yeah. Check that out if you like Lamb of God. And, um, you know, you like I said, Honorable Discharge, all singing. I feel like people who listen to bands like Kill Switch Engage and All That Remains and yeah. Shadows Fall will definitely love you guys, hands yeah, down. Yeah, that New England sound, yeah, totally. Yeah, and um, but you also have, like, the Orange County, uh, and not just from being out in California, yeah, but, but you have the Orange... Kind of like Kind of hardcore grit, yep. you know. Like I, I think that our sound has like like has like a certain attitude to it. Yeah. And I, I don't mean like oh, because it's you know it's my band, it's the best band. But I definitely think we definitely kind of have like kind of like a like a little bit of grit to it. Like you said, kind of Orange County sound, you know. But it's kind of like the kind of hardcore ish type to it, you know. And covering Heart Shaped Box, you bring a little bit of Seattle in there as yeah, well. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly, man. We're like a smorgasbord of metal. Yeah. And yeah. I love that. That should be your slogan. It should be. But I also consider you guys a good like throwback in a way, because I mean people loved. Uh, uh, Tommy when he was in Divine Heresy uh -huh. and like you know so I see that element in there and people who love Kill Switch Engage and all that remains of course will love you guys you're like a real throwback because uh, I don't really like this term so I'm not even going to say it but like uh, you know bands that had a combination of screaming and singing it almost yeah. took like I would say in 2010 kind of took like a little bit of a lighter softer turn you guys are a throwback like yeah I feel like, you know, uh, you know we, we joke around we're like oh we want to be the next you know big American metal band but this is not a joke. It'll happen. Yeah. Well, thank, well, thank you. Thank you for believing in us. But you know, that, that it's very sincere. Like we want to be the next big American metal band, and 
you know, because there's a lot of bands that, you know, like are out doing it right now that some kind of fell off the wayside. And it's just like, you know, like what's the, what's the new, like, like name one band that came out in the last five years that came out in five years that's like huge, you know? Yeah, and, it's, it's, and especially with the issues in the music industry now, like, you know, like I would say one band that's taken off now would be a Gemini Syndrome. Yeah, that, of course. Of yeah, course. that's our boys. Yeah. yeah. Their new yeah. record is phenomenal, too. Yeah, totally, yeah. And uh, another band, uh, Butcher Babies. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, they're really successful, but it's really hard with how the music industry is. Yeah, but that's totally less like, I mean, like so we joke around, kind of ha-ha, we want to be the next whatever, but in, in, all, in all honesty, you know, the, the five of us, like, we all kind of said, hey, look, we want to be the next big American metal band. And that's what our goals are set on for 2017. That's what we want to do. And, um, I mean, the fact that you already went out with Trivium and Seven Dust and opening up Not Fest and... Yeah, not and, a bad start. And, yeah. of course, going out with Candiria, who's a New York City oh, legend. Yeah. Like, we're that's, so pumped. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's going to be great. And um, so aside from the new album, I know uh, you can't really go into detail on tours coming up, but uh, do you, you do plan on touring a lot more? Oh, after the at 2017 is going to be a really busy year. You know, last year was pretty busy for us. Um, that's kind of like our our debut year, you know what I mean? And now we have to follow up and do something even more, you know, bigger. So... A lot of touring. That's all I can say. Like we're definitely looking at some packages for the spring and the summer, with, an, with another record coming out. And honestly, man, I'm, it's hard for me to digest that we had a record come out less than a year ago. Now we're like, all right, let's crank that next record out. So yeah, that does get overwhelming. I know that drove Slipknot absolutely crazy when they had to go from the first record to Iowa and yeah. stuff like that. And yeah. and um, one thing I do want to ask about the new record um, because your last record was truly successful, sounded phenomenal. Um, with this new record, are you going to try to more or less like kind of make a follow-up to it to maintain what Westfield Massacre started out? Or are you going to try to experiment a little more or like uh, try to incorporate other newer elements into it? We're going to top it. Is this going to be better? It's like, is this going to be better? You know, it's going to be us, but better. You know, it's like, hey, have you heard the new record? It's fucking awesome. That's what, that's what we want people to say. Not, oh, well, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like, no, no, dude, listen to the new record. Um, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. You said it's coming out in spring of 2017, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, th this spring. We're, we are kicking ass right now in the studio as we speak. Yeah, And they're doing it because of all of you, including myself, yeah. who contributed to the Kickstarter yeah. campaign. And I'm truly thankful to be interviewing a band because this was a, I know that it was really hard. I think you're like the first band of your style to... Uh, I've heard uh, a rumor about that. Maybe Tommy said it or I don't know. All right, cut that out. Um, no, no, no. For what? For oh, the for Kickstarter? The, for the Kickstarter, yeah. Like <coughs> Excuse me. So... 98 so so first off thank you to everyone who contributed to our kickstarter that was amazing you know we crushed our goal and like exceeded it astronomically it was amazing um you know going into kickstarter we had to do a lot of research kind of going into it like okay because it's a huge calculated risk right but it's, it was necessary for the future of the band to continue it, it sincerely was um 98 percent of all musical kickstarter campaigns of the amount that we set our goal to fail 98 percent so we were the two percent that did it so, uh, thank you. That's all, I, I, that's all I can say. It's like, I have no words other than thank you. <laughs> and, and, you, know, you know, we have amazing fans around the world. We have people from Japan, Hong Kong, Australia, New Zealand, you name it, who are like, hey, look, we love your band. We bought a t-shirt or a hoodie, or our name's going to be on the new record, or whatever it may be. And it's, it's so cool. Like, you know, we, we, we weren't around America, you know, like the, the U.S. and like, okay, cool, meeting fans. And that, that, we were super grateful for that. And it was amazing. We loved that. And then, like, we really realized with the Kickstarter and obviously through the internet, like, that we have fans around the world who are just as passionate. Like, it's not like, oh, we're a home turf band. It's like, no, there's there's a kid in, like, Denmark who's like, Westworld Massacre, Dio Brute is my favorite drummer ever. And we're like, what? You know? So, very thankful, man. Like, you know, yeah. no words. That's all I can say. We're thankful and we love you guys. That's something right about uh, the music you put out because yeah. I, that. We're very thankful, man. Yeah. So, uh, finally, uh, just because we specialize in gear, I just want to ask okay. uh, we're here at Kirk Mangan Guitar Strings, so I know that you use those strings, I believe. Yeah, right? yeah. I actually have a custom gauge for my. Uh, Kurt Mangan take incredible care of me. Um, I started working with Kurt Mangan about. January, uh, actually like NAMM 2015, so two years ago now, I started working with Kurt Mangan, and they take incredible care of me, man. They actually gave me two signature sets. You can actually buy those online if you want to check them out. You just look for my ugly mug on it. But you can check those out. And um, I have a six string set, it's a nickel wound, it's a 10 to 48. And then I have a seven string set, it's a 10 to 60. They're great, you know, 
they last, they sound great, they feel good on tour. I mean, you know, they they do everything a guitar string's supposed to do. I mean, they, I love those guys. They take so good care of me. And uh, what kind of guitar do you use exactly? Uh, I'm using ESPs. And uh, for gear or amp wise, I'm using Kemper. Okay. Yeah, so live I, I use Kemper. Um, my guitars are uh, uh, E2 Eclipse and E2 Horizon 7 because we use 7 string tuning also, which that was, uh, <laughs> that's fun. Um, Talk about going low. Yeah, yeah, I, n I never really played 7 string till Westfield. And then I'm like, okay, cool, chug, chug, here we go. Yeah, yeah I'm like, ah. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm using Kurt Mangan, I'm using ESP, and then also on tour, and then even a studio using Kemper. You know, it's just, it's kind of like, people are like, oh, do you miss using, like, valve state heads? Uh, of course I do, man. Like, you know, there's no sound, like, of a tube pushing air. It's a beautiful sound, but it's kind of like, have your CD collection, like your book of CDs that you used to have in your car, like, five years ago, you know what I mean? Like, oh, what CD am I going to listen to? You know, through your CD book? Or have your iPod. Yeah. It's the same thing, you know? So I'm using my Kemper, ESPs, Kurt Mangan, uh, Intune guitar picks, Dunlop straps, uh, Vans, shoes, you know? <laughs> Yeah, those are very important. Yeah, 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 I yeah. mean, if you're running around the stage, you need yeah. comfortable shoes. I, I don't think I could do it in Dark Martins. Yeah, they get broken in jumping around for sure. Um, so because you have like a very heavy but yet melodic uh, style, would you say your gear, You did you pick that gear to go along with the sound of Westfield or was it just kind of something you worked with the most and felt the most comfortable using? Honestly, it, it, they really both go hand in hand, both, both of those, uh, what you just said, bud. Uh, like, you know, the ESP, I mean, like, you, ESP is a really versatile company. I mean, you can do like brutal shredding metal, like going crazy, you know, or you can play not brutal, crazy metal, you know, like that's, to me, that's what a true instrument does. It's versatile. Like you can play an E9 chord and it's beautiful and it shimmers and you can play like a nasty eight string guitar. Like, you know, like to me, that's what a real instrument does is you can, the player can make it sound how it needs to sound. You know what I mean? Any uh, great guitars can make the worst guitar ever sound phenomenal. Yeah, for the for the most part, yeah. I mean, because it comes from your hands. But you know, Kurt Mangan strings, they're they're great. I mean, they're bright, they're crunchy, they stay in tune. They, I mean, they they just shimmer. I mean, I, I love the way they sound and what they feel. You know, they they cut through in the mix. You know, we use a lot of low tunings, but they still have that kind of like attack to them. That's why we really like those. And of course, with the Kemper, I mean, those are extremely versatile um, heads. You know, amplifiers. So, you know. That's awesome. It all goes hand in hand. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You know, you got to be a great player, but you also need the gear to support the player, and vice. Absolutely. You know, the, the the guy feeds off the gear, and the gear feeds off the guy. So. Yeah, you know, and I'm really fortunate to have companies that support me and believe in my dreams, and they believe in me just as much as I believe in their product. So it's beautiful. I love it. Excellent. Great so, thing. So before we go, uh, anything you would like to say, uh, promote? I think we covered pretty much everything, but uh, anything that we could have left out? Uh, no, just thank you again, everyone who supported our Kickstarter. We could not have done this without you. Uh, big shout out to ESP, Kemper, and Kurt Manga Strings, and uh, you guys at Alto Music and everyone for having us, man. We're very thank thankful. Thank you so much. You, Everybody, Stephen Brewer from Westfield Massacre. Check out their first record. It sounds phenomenal. If not, you have been missing out. Be sure to check them if you're on the West Coast. Check them out on their tour with my friends in Candiria. Be sure to check that out. You do not want to miss that. Stephen Brewer, Westfield Massacre, everybody.